Okay, thank you so much, and uh, thanks uh, uh, to HISPI for, for having me. Such an honor for me to be here today. As you see, um, the session is about uh, building up the supply chains of the future, uh, given up the disruptions that we had due to the pandemic. The situation is, uh, is very difficult. Um, the international trade is predicted to undergo a very difficult time. Um, so we will be talking about this, of course, concentrating on the Mediterranean area. So thanks uh, to, to my guests. I'm very pleased to have you here. Um, but let me start uh, with uh, the opening remarks made by Malio Di Stefano, Under Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation for Italy, Mr. Di Stefano. If you can go to the floor, thank you. I thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to have here the Minister of Startups of Algeria and all the guests that are here today that will give an insight on this very important topic of today. Honorable guests, dear friends, it's my great pleasure to join today's forum specifically focused on regional trade and the threat of illicit trafficking in a post-pandemic Mediterranean. A relevant initiatives of the seventh edition of the MED Dialogues to address challenges and build opportunities in the field of supply chains between Mediterranean countries. Let me express my sincere gratitude to the Italian Institute for International Political Studies for taking this initiative. We are all fully aware of how building a safe and sound supply chain for the trade of goods, people and factors of production is a top priority for regional growth in general and for more and more interconnected Mediterranean countries in particular. As I had the opportunity to remember two days ago at the initial event of this edition of the Med Dialogue, the Mediterranean Sea is not to be considered a dividing factor between our countries instead. It unites them in a common history and a shared future. It is facing today historical challenges calling for joint efforts. Although it remains a platform of strategic relevance, offering crucial economic, infrastructural, and energetic opportunities, the wider Mediterranean represents an area in which complex dynamics unfold and where the threat of illicit trafficking needs our utmost attention to maintain the region's stability. Today's discussion gives us the opportunity to reflect upon some post-pandemic scenarios affecting the security dimension in the enlarged Mediterranean, while trying to devise new policies to confront them. We must ensure that its effects do not leave people behind and that organized crime do not take advantage from the current circumstances. The crisis has hit all of us very hard. On a general level, we have realized that the pandemic is accelerating geopolitical processes that have been already underway. Illicit trafficking is no exception in this regard. Initially, COVID-19 made criminal activities more challenging. Border closures, travel restrictions, and reduced flights have made it less easy to move illicit goods around the globe. At the same time, it also challenged crime prevention efforts, placing considerable strain on our capacity to detect prevent and combat transnational organized crime. As we moved farther into the crisis, additional opportunities for organized crime emerged. Criminal networks have been quick to adapt to the current situations, diverting their activities and identifying new vulnerable targets. Many of these targets are facing the economic and social consequences of the pandemic. Increased is isolation, economic desperation, we should always keep in mind that the most vulnerable in our societies, including youth and women, are particularly exposed to the risk of becoming victims of organized crime. The pandemic is bound to trigger smuggling of migrants and trafficking of human beings, illicit trafficking of a variety of goods, including medical products, drugs, and cultural property, money laundering, and corruption. While the worsening of social and economic conditions have disrupted some illicit markets, it has allowed others to thrive. Our own collective security is at stake. The security of the Mediterranean and the rest of the world is at stake. 
Due to the movement restrictions, criminal networks are increasingly exploiting the opportunities of the internet to perpetrate their crimes online. Added to this is the fact that the increased use of the internet during the pandemic has increased the pool of potential victims of cyber fraud and buyers of products deriving from illicit trafficking. The fight against cybercrime is therefore an essential component of the fight against trafficking. In the face of all these challenges, it is even more important to engage in dialogue on how to overcome together this unprecedented situation. The crisis has reminded us that multilateralism is the only way forward. We must reinforce our cooperation. We need to develop strategies to address the root causes leading to organized crime and booster the cooperation of our law enforcement agencies and juridical actors. Mm -hmm. In doing so, we must, of course, uphold to our international commitments. Italy attaches the utmost importance to the international cooperation in countering transnational challenges, as proven by our commitment to the United Nations Conventions Against Transnational Organized Crime, also known as the Palermo Convention and its protocols. Italy also contributes to several international projects aimed at improving the ability to prevent and combat illicit trafficking. For example, we recently funded a United Office National Nations Office for Drug Control and Crime Prevention project on combating firearms trafficking with a focus on the Sahel, which also includes organizing a, se a seminar sub-regional on cooperation in criminal matters. Over the last few years, we have promoted the issue of trafficking in cultural assets within the Organization for Cooperation and Security in Europe, supporting numerous tra training activities for law enforcement experts with a focus on specific threats in the Mediterranean area, in the Balkans, in Central and Eastern Asia, enhancing the exceptional experience of the Carabinieri Command for the protection of cultural heritage and favoring the establishment of a network of contract contacts for an effective action to combat the phenomenon. Finally, respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms should always guide our mm -hmm. action. This is a central component for our effort in preventing and countering organized crime, even during exceptional circumstances such as the current pandemic. The, for all the reasons that I've just said, it is very important, the panel that we will have today. I thank the uh, guests for that, and I'm sure that they will give us a real insight on how we can prevent all these problems that we are facing today. I thank you all for your attention, and I wish you all a fruitful panel of discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Under Secretary. <laughs> thank you for your interesting note that um, pointed out some of the main issues we will be discussing today.